Welcome again to the very, very last plenary of this very, very long and very wonderful conference. Um, we're, coming, we're coming slowly to a close. Um, we have two more contributions this afternoon, and that is we have one talk by Mrs. Temple from the Foreign Office, and then we have a, a concluding little uh, sort of feedback session, so to speak. But first, I would like to ask um, Heidrun Temple to the stage. Mrs. Temple is the Deputy Director General for Education, Science, Diplomacy, and Higher Education Policy, as well as Foreign Cultural Relations. She works at the German Foreign Office. She's a lawyer by training. She has had a distinguished career in the public service and for different organizations. She's worked for the Protestant Church in Brussels. She's worked for the German Chancellery. And most recently, she was the German ambassador to Azerbaijan. So she has a very wide spectrum and I think a very sort of uh, space of experience. So I welcome Mr. Temple to the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Grissel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. It's, as Mr. Grissel said, after a long conference, and you'll see a new face and next contribution, I, I tell you, I will keep it short. And, uh, you know, we as the Federal Foreign Office, in a way, we kept silent throughout this conference, although I was here from the very beginning, not at all at every session. I've been told I missed a wonderful session this afternoon, but I was here this morning when we had an extremely interesting session about Turkey. And um, because we as the Federal Foreign Office, we say this is the university, this is a free space of discussion, we observe and now I was invited to make some remarks and observations that I would like to share with you. And uh, I, first of all, I want to fully heartedly thank the three organizing institutions. Scholars at Risk, Rob will be on stage later on. It was my pleasure having met you the first time this week. And uh, you know, we spoke in the last year so much about Scholars at Risk and your undeniable and indispensable contribution. You also always gave to our little, you know, endeavor, Philip Schwartz, and we know that this is a big family and a big entity of trust and of cooperation, and it is my personal pleasure that we finally met this week here in Berlin. I'm extremely grateful to the Alexander from Humboldt Foundation, our partner organization, that we have the luck since more than 50 years to finance institutionally from the Ferry Foreign Office to the academic world, and of course, to the host organization, the Free University in Berlin, which really is a landmark and an asset in the city. You all have learned a little bit about history of this university. And I think it was a good coincidence that these three organizations got together to turn out this conference. And um, let me bring a few remarks and observations to you. My minister, Heiko Maas, he today uh, with the Foreign Office and uh, Alexander from Humboldt, they, uh, we launched a press release at the end of this conference because we think that this is such a remarkable event that should also be taken up on a political stage. And uh, Minister Mars, he stated that against the background of ongoing shrinking spaces for art, science and free expression, we, as the Foreign Office, we reinforce um, our foreign culture policy that aims to enlarge and to protect free spaces worldwide. Free spaces in particular in countries where the spaces are shrinking by different means. Philip Schwartz's initiative, designed to give scholars at risk time and opportunity to live and to work in Germany, is an integral part of that policy. My minister expressed additionally the commitment that we are planning to provide an extra new initiative which is designed to spend the same opportunity and space for artists at risk in Germany, a program that we hope to achieve and to implement throughout this year with the help of members of German Bundestag and our partner organizations. We have heard a Thank you very much for that echo. We heard a lot in these days 
about the freedom of science and the freedom of expression and that they are, and we all know that, and many of you witness that from your daily experiences, are under pressure. We see war and conflicts, nearly seven million people on flight or uprooted, authoritarianism is spreading. And what does it mean for the individual? It means isolation and silence, censorship and self-censorship. This is the daily practice in many places around the world. And this, I think, was the undergoing story and the layer that brought all the people, all the interventions, and all the very fruitful remarks over these four days together. I personally observed and learned a lot. I learned more about Sarah, I learned more about Kara that I've met before, but I learned also a lot about new and younger initiatives, like those which have been presented to us from France, from Belgium, from Canada, from Mexico, and I know this list is totally incomplete. Many, many more initiatives have been presented here and will go on. I found the idea very striking that we should think about a mapping of all existing uh, initiatives, because I think there are many more than we are maybe aware of, given our national or continental, um, you know, um, small aside, but I don't know, uh, Rob, whether this is already existing. I think it was, uh, it was mentioned during the discussions, and I wonder whether this mapping is already existing. Anyway, I think it would be helpful to have it. There were a few key words that has been mentioned throughout these days many times. The one was lessons learned. And it meant, how do we accompany the scholars that we have in our initiative? How do we, uh, how do we accompany them best? How long should the scholarship take? Is the time sufficient that we can provide them with a shelter, with a sanctuary, with a time where they can work and be protected? Should this be extended? That was a question that was raised many times. Then there were other positions. Should we think about what will happen when the stipend is finished? Should we think about that from day one? Don't lose time was also something which was mentioned a lot of times. And the advice of counseling the next steps for an academic career as well as a transfer into a different job uh, environment, maybe in the private sector. Another point which I heard many times was, what's about the next steps? How are we going on? How do we reinforce the networks? to the scholars in their home countries, between the institutions, between the hosting organizations. Mm, but how can we help those who would wish to maybe leave their country, but they can't, be it uh, possibilities like distant learning, digital networks, digital working space have been mentioned. An issue that concerns us also in the foreign office almost every day is the question, how to best protect, how to best strive for academic freedom, worldwide, in particular conditions, under difficult conditions. The discussion this morning was very exemplary. Should we go for more engagement, deepen engagement? Should we go for less or even stop cooperation under certain conditions? We heard different positions on that this morning, and I think this is exactly what we're discussing all the time. Where are the red lines? Do we have red lines? What will be the consequences if we leave the room? Who can come in again? Many of those questions, I think, you will raise them, you discuss them in your constituencies, and be assured we discuss them in the office and in our embassies every day. The other point which was mentioned and which is clearly and obviously an issue is being a scholar, being a scholar at risk, and at the same time having the status of a refugee. How does this go together? There is the daily struggle for visa, for residence permits, for working permits, for the future. All these are very practical questions that we are very much working on since we are within this Philip Schwartz initiative. And then I heard many voices that said, okay, the academic community is broader. What's about the undergraduate? What's about the students? 
From the German perspective, I can tell you we have a bigger package. That was not exactly the issue of this meeting, but um, with the colleagues from the uh, Ministry for Higher Education and Research, they set up almost simultaneously with the initiative that we do in the Foreign Office, a big program for Syrian students in Germany. So today you have almost 25,000 students from Syria, also many, many, I think 400, yes, I think only about 400 here in this university, but many goes first to language classes or to prep classes before they can fully start a fully fledged study here. And this also helped to shape the university landscape in Germany a lot because the universities today are much more involved in internationalization in the question of freedom of science since they engage much, much more in, in housing and in hosting you know, students also from conflict zones. And this also is, 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 is a changing system. We have a mentoring system, a body system that helps to orientate and to self-organize the students. The Federal Foreign Office, we have smaller scale program and very particular one. Even last week, we, fare, we gave farewell to 221 students from Syria, which um, had to apply for a very high level program. 5,000 applications, 221 were selected. They had two and a half years in German universities and one particular program in the university in Constance, a blended learning program where they learned about good governance and they learned about uh, sustainable economy and self-management. So those who normally, they never saw each other in Syria, they met in Germany at one university in a blended learning program and they all, they speak marvelously German now and the most of them, most of them are committed to go back to Syria nevertheless for the time being. The opportunity to do so are very little. On the other hand, we have 200 master's students at the German Turkish University in Istanbul, at the German Jordan University in Amman and at the German University in Cairo so Syrian students in surplus stipends and scholarships in the neighboring countries. And in addition, since 26 years, we have a program with the UNHCR, the so-called Albert Einstein stipend program, more than 6,000 scholarships in more than 50 countries. So these are refugee students that are, they could fulfill and finish their studies in a neighboring country or in the country of refuge. And this we're doing since 26 years. This is a little example of, you know, the engagement that we show. And believe me, why we are doing so, we know, we Germans know that there was a period in our history when uh, the freedom of science and, in principle, individual freedoms and were, were not respected at all. When people of different belief and political opinion or race were outlawed, discriminated, persecuted. And so it's not by incident that we choose the name of the Jewish professor Philip Schwartz from Frankfurt to be, you know, the, the remarkable personality to lead us through our current program. He was a Jewish professor at, in Frankfurt and he had to overcome major obstacles in the 1930s to bring several groups of Jewish scholars to Turkey. He stayed in Turkey himself until 1953, so sometimes it takes really long. And which is, at a bitter note from a German perspective, he wanted to come back to Germany, but the University of Frankfurt refused that. So he went on to the United States and he was then teaching and working in Philadelphia. No, oh, Pennsylvania, sorry for that. So, um, Philip Schwartz, we could have never done this alone as the Federal Foreign Office. We, in close partnership with Alexander from Humboldt, with the Federal Lender, with private foundations and private donors. And we are very pleased that uh, the vice president of this university, Professor Hoffmann Holland, at the opening session, he announced two more stipends that the university will take responsibility for, together with the Ernst Reuter Association. For those who are not that familiar with the history of Berlin, Ernst Reuter was a famous mayor in this city, and when he was young, he was a scholar, and he received, he had the opportunity to work in Turkey from 1933 onwards, after until the end of the Second World War. So also the former mayor of Berlin, he, he also, you know, received refuge in Turkey. 
To sum up, ladies and gentlemen, I think it was a wonderful coincidence that Scholars at Risk has decided and asked for convening this meeting this year in Berlin. We're very grateful for that. It gives us opportunity to display a little bit what we're doing, to learn a little bit more what all the other institutions' incentives are doing, to create, hopefully, a network that lasts for longer, because I think it's very important that all the initiatives get hold of each other, we know from each other, we learn from each other, and we get better for the sake of the scholars, for the sake of the students, and for the sake also of the understanding that might grow among each other. And so I look forward to where the next conference will be held. Maybe you know it already, Rob, maybe you will disclose it in 2020 when you celebrate anyway. Um, here the 10th, I think, the 10th gathering. So it's, it's really a pleasure and I'm very grateful to Alexander from Humboldt that they are doing the job of serving as the secretariat for SAR in Germany. And so they also brought the universities closer to scholars at risk by, by serving as a secretariat until next year. Thank you for that as well. And I would like to close with a very personal remark to a colleague, unfortunately she can't be here this afternoon, but you remember her, she was the wonderful Master of Ceremonies for the opening session, Ulrike Albrecht. She, for us in Berlin, here in the Federal Foreign Office, she was a little bit together with Barbara, there were the two faces from Philip Schwartz, and you were doing the job marvelously, and you are representing this, and uh, Ulrike Albrecht, she was the liaison officer, so to say, to the German Parliament, to the government, to us, the colleagues in the Foreign Office. She isn't here this afternoon because she has to prepare a party for tomorrow morning, because she is going to retire. And this is such an unbelievable thing that she is really going to retire. I'm, I refuse to believe that. Anyway, I wanted to this audience to thank her very personally and to ask the colleagues to bring over, you know, my personal greetings. I know she will remain very connected and very uh, a reliable partner in the academic landscape in Germany and elsewhere. And now she is heading for a journey with her husband to Taiwan. So I wish her all the best and my very personal gratitude to her and what she has achieved in the cooperation with Scholars at Risk and for Philipp Schwarz and us in Germany. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Temple, for this sort of wonderful overview of uh, what we're doing, and also this live overview. You can have a seat. I have the, I have the left one. Uh, live overview. And I, I have to say one thing. I mean, I, it might sound corny and cheesy, but right now, it feels good to be a German citizen. It feel, it's, no, I have to say that, you know, like, to have a government that supports these kinds of action, to have a government not only that let in a lot of refugees who needed it, to let in scholars, and who actually pays for it and funds it. I mean, there are not that many governments in the world that do it. And I have to say, you know, sometimes we are critical of our governments, lots of things to criticize, but in this respect, I have to say, as a German citizen, my, as I said, it might sound corny, might sound corny. I, it's good to be a German citizen at this point in time. Sorry, I have to say that. But here we go. Concluding panel. Concluding panels. What do concluding panels do? They're usually the most boring thing in the world. Um, I have two guests here. Rob Quinn, has been, you've seen him. But I think Barbara hasn't been officially, I mean, everyone knows her, but I'm mean, not sure whether you've been officially inf uh, uh, um, uh, what's the word, introduced at this conference. So I should at least give you a title. She's the head of the division strategic planning at the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation and where she's among other things responsible for the Philip Schwartz Initiative. And she has, I have to say this, she has developed this initiative together with Ulrike Albrecht from the very, very beginning with a lot of enthusiasm, as I know. And so I think we have exactly the right people here uh, uh, sitting on the panel, two people who developed something from the very beginning, only that Rob started, what was it, 18 years ago or something like that. So, concluding panels have two functions usually. They look back at the conference, and so the first question is, you know, what are you taking home? What are the messages you're taking home? What are your experience? The second question would be, 
What are we going to do? Where do we go from here? And then in the end, we can say one more time, thank you. But let's, do, let's start with the, uh, what are you taking home? Barbara, do you want, want to start? What am I taking home? First yeah. of all, I hardly want this conference to end because yeah. it has been so wonderful. Um, but actually, we are coming to the end of a, what has been an inspiring conference. And I think I take three things with me. I think it has been completely inspiring inspiring that so many fellows have been here, have shared their stories with us, that we've had host institutions and organizations committed to working towards academic freedom, that we've all gotten together in this conference. This has been truly inspiring. It has also been encouraging, encouraging that there are so many of us who are active in this field, who are working towards the same goal, and that we're not alone. We can support each other, we can help each other, and give each other inspiration to continue in our work. And the third thing is, I think, the conference will have a sustainable effect. Sustainable because my feeling is, by now, we know each other very well. We are, I think, thanks to Czar, we're also a strong network by now, and we will continue to work together and support each other. Two take-home messages. I think we have to continue working for academic freedom. We need to cherish it when we have it, and we need to provide support at, for people and environments where it is lacking. And second, it is absolutely necessary to network and to connect, to exchange experience. I don't Temple was referring to that, connecting between scholars, host institutions, and learning from each other to find a voice and to give each other strength. Rob, do you want to continue? Yeah, I, so first of all, I want to echo your thanks and for Barbara for having the vision and the skill to carry this forward because you were there in Amsterdam and really have carried the ball, so tremendous. Um, you know, I think when we started out, I asked us all to recommit ourselves to each other and to this work, to, to challenge each other, to listen, and I just really want to commend all of you because I think that's what we've done for the last four or five days. And, so I think that's really what I'm, I'm most carrying from these days. Um, I think this year was new. We added the scholar voices so we could hear from the scholars as professionals and the poster sessions. And, and I was so moved by what they did and so impressed by the skill of what they do. So that to me was just tremendous. Um, all of the meetings in this beautiful, beautiful building with this gorgeous atrium. So every time I went back and forth the length of the building, there were all of these fabulous, fabulous conversations going on. And that's exactly why, why we're here, why we're doing this, right? Uh, and then I think I take the, the, the network, by which I mean all of us, as I said, it came up in one of the meetings, the, the idea that this thing is, not the entity, not the organization, but the idea. We now have these national chapters and we have partners. We have a committee. I mean, it's great. We have a committee, uh, and where it's going. But so, um, but then I guess also just emotionally or personally, my heart is feeling the same thing I felt at the end of our founding conference 18 months ago, when to be honest, I never really thought this would work. Uh, I had never organized a conference in my life. I'm not an academic, and we had this meeting, and we basically said would you, could you, kind of, maybe we could get something going. And before it ended, 20 universities said yes. Uh, and now I have the exact same feeling, but it's much bigger. It's much, much, much bigger. So, so I thank all of you for that, and I thank you know, Humboldt and everybody. But I think we've made enormous progress. Fantastic. Maybe just a few words from the perspective of Freie Universität. I mean, looking back at the conference, I can only say with partners like this, we could do this conference every six months, I would say. <laughs> no, it's fabulous. If you have such professional partners, you know, you provide some rooms, we do do some, some organization, but fantastic. So any time, you know, if one of your partners, well, yeah, well, any time, yeah, yeah. We'll see, but you might first, to try to find another one, but then sort of any time. And, um, and I personally, I haven't been to all the sessions, but I think I've come back with a lot of questions, questions concerning, you know, like more serious con uh, questions concerning how do we position ourselves as universities? I mean, that this is not just 
one extra project of the university or one extra program, but that this, this is part and core of our identity. I think to a certain degree we are aware of that at Freie Universität, but I think you know, we have to take the whole university and everyone should know what we're doing. And I, th I think that's, you know, I've, I've, I'm going home with questions about identity and how we can strengthen our ethos, but I'm also going home with some answers in terms of because that's our daily office, uh, daily bread, and our daily task in international office, how to deal with authoritarian regimes. And we had some very interesting discussions here this morning, this afternoon, yesterday, in the individual discussions. And that's, well, as Mr. Temple said, I mean, it's the kind of thing we have to discuss, and it helps us. But we are not professional diplomats. I mean, usually we exchange students, and we, but we have to think about these things. So in that respect, the, university, uh, the, the conference helped me. How do we, what do we, where do we go from here? How do we go forward? I'm sure the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation has lots of further wonderful ideas. Well, our major idea, our hope, and our wish is to continue with the Philip Schwartz Initiative. We are incredibly privileged to be able to run this program with the gracious support of the Federal Foreign Office, who uh, have helped us um, implement and have been a tremendous support ever since we launched it in 2015, but it is not a permanent program yet. Unfortunately, it seems that the need for the program is there, and I would even say it continues to grow. So for us, we would really, our, really our goal is to turn it into, to um, turn it into a long-term program, and I know that we have uh, Ms. Temple's support in helping us look for the funding. It is not easy, but it's one thing uh, we're, we're working on. The second thing is um, that we see at the Humboldt Foundation, we need to think about transitions. Anybody in a rescue program can be supported for one year, two year, three year, whatever. There comes a point when you need to think about how your career continues, how you can enter into a regular job market in Germany, in another country, in science, in another field. So that is something we want to address. How can we work in this entire issue, on this entire issue of transitions? And maybe third, this not being so much a challenge, but a concrete announcement. Um, at the end of the conference, looking at another conference, I understand, uh, but not necessarily with you again in, in a very short future, but we want to hold another conference in 2019 in the mm. context of Philip Schwartz um, for um, science, threatened sciences scholars, their hosts, and other institutions, mm. because we really see the need to continue the conversations. And what we have done already, we have been able, uh, and also at the encouragement of the Foreign Office, we have engaged in talks with all the research science and research funding organizations, and they have come on board and will be a partner in, this con in the conference so that we can offer more information and hopefully support to the fellows. We'll send the save the date very soon. That was already a very long list. <laughs> Rob, uh, what are your plans or your organization's plans or what do you want to share with us? Where do we go from here? Well, so my frame for walking through the conference in addition to just talking to everybody and absorbing was, you know, as I said at the beginning, more, better. What can we do more of? What can we do better? So I have a long list. Um, you know, in the network side, we want to do more. We want to have more sections in more countries. We want more participation, but we also want to support the sections better so that there's more resources and capacity and working with them and communication and partnerships between them. On the protection side, we want to place more scholars. We need more hosts. We need to get more support to scholars. But we also want to make sure we're working with the other projects, these wonderful mushrooming different projects that are coming up, support that more creativity. At the same time, as Barbara said, we need to be better about the end part, the graduation, the transition part, mm -hmm. and be working on it as early as possible so that we're giving all of our colleagues a fair chance to, to keep going into their careers. On the advocacy side, we want more monitoring, we want to report. We've only scratched the surface of the problems that we know about. There are some we know about, right? and there's always we don't yet know about. Uh, and we want to get better. So we had a really great panel this afternoon on doing an index. Mm -hmm. so, we can, so we can actually show the world whether it's getting better or not in different places. In the value space, we've had great conversations, great workshops. We want to do more workshops, just start growing this conversation in small conversations as well as in conferences, because sometimes it has to be a small conversation. Um, and we want to get better, and so we have our MOOC, which we're really excited about. And if people will indulge us, we want to show you the trailer for the MOOC, right? And remember, you can register now, and it starts June 4th, okay?
Did you ever have a question that you wanted to ask, but didn't because you were afraid of what might happen? Because you might be laughed at? Because someone might get angry? Scholars and students around the world ask questions. Questions about the environment. Questions about health. Questions about poverty and development. Questions about justice. Questions about truth. And the answers to those questions affect all of society. But sometimes asking questions can be dangerous. Academic freedom protects the right to ask sensitive, even dangerous questions. Not just scholars' questions, but the freedom for you to think and ask questions that really matter. In this course, we'll ask what academic freedom is and why it matters not only to the scholars, but to all of us. We will talk about how you can promote academic freedom and we want to know what are your dangerous questions. So the idea in that course is really a really important one for me for this Congress and certainly looking forward is again the more better. There aren't enough students in this room. We want more students involved in this work. And I realized through several of our keynotes and conversations the public isn't here. Uh -huh. uh, and if we need safe universities, we need the public to stand up and defend the universities. So, so the MOOC is a way to try to broaden our audience, reach out, get this conversation bigger, wider. So, so that's what we're looking for. We're excited to come back in 2019 and to be a part of that meeting. I think it's essential that these meetings keep happening. Uh, and yes, we will have a Congress in 2020. Um, there will be a survey after this event. You'll all get it by email. I beg you, please complete it. Be candid. If it was, didn't work, tell us. If it did work, but in that, it also says, where should the Congress be? So I don't have the surprise announcement where it will be. We want to know from all of you where should it be and when should it be. So, but we really, go into this next phase with tremendous, tremendous push from this. So. Well, that sounds like a very um, ambitious plan. I just want to say a few words also what we plan here as an individual institution at Freie Universität. Uh, of course, we will continue to engage ourselves with SAR, with the Philip Schwartz Initiative. Uh, we will we'll, we'll use all funds we can get, so we also work with Scholar Rescue Fund, of course. We've also used, for the last five years, our own funds. We've used funds that were so left over funds from European programs that were hidden away in some, some corner of my international office. So we, we find funds for that, but we've also, uh, Mr. Temple mentioned it already, our uh, Friends Association has made a pledge that they want to raise enough money to have two scholarships per year for the next five years. That's very, very ambitious because we're not good at fundraising usually. So that's a new thing for us. Uh, we are in the lucky position to be in Berlin. The Senate of Berlin, the Einstein Foundation, that's our science foundation, has sort of provided some funds for, uh, also for threatened scholars in specific areas uh, where we've applied uh, already to, to, you know, also for the transition phase, what you mentioned, that's so difficult to bring people into proper, um, proper uh, uh, sort of professional careers. So there are all these things we're gonna do. Another new initiative is by my colleague Florian Kostal. Uh, it's called uh, Academics and Solidarity, and we've got funding for the German Ministry of uh, Research and Education, and that's sort of a uh, Germany-wide uh, mentoring program. It's sort of academics, it's peer-to-peer -peer academics here in Germany, and we hope to start that in September, and those who are interested, Florian is in the audience, and it's a good-looking gray-haired guy over there. Florian, can you stand up for a second? So if you, have, if you want to be part of a mentoring program, he is the person to talk to. It's not there yet, but you know, like soon it will be. So uh, hopefully, for and you have interesting conversations at the reception. So, um, so a lot of things to do, and uh, 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 it's. Uh, I think we are extremely grateful that we, uh, you know, were allowed to be the host. And that brings me to thank yous, Barbara. I think for you. I will say. <laughs> The end of the conference is the point to express thank yous, and these are very sincerely felt on my behalf. 
I want to start by thanking the German Federal Foreign Office. They are not the hosts of this conference, but it's thanks to the leadership and vision of Andreas Görgen and Heidrun Tempel that we were able to introduce the Philip Schwartz Initiative, and I know they're doing all they can to help us turn it into a more permanent program. Thank you, and also thank you for taking the time to be with us for, for many hours. I want to thank all the speakers, the moderators, for providing inspiration, all the, participa all the participants for the engagement in the Congress, for sharing your very personal stories that have been very, very touching and moving at times. I want to thank Elke Löschorn from the Freie University in Berlin. I don't see her right now, but I know she's there. There she is. Um, Elke and I met in Amsterdam in February of 2014. It has become legend. She, at the time, she was the only representative of a full-fledged university in Germany in the Saar network. Um, we met there. She is a true pioneer. She had the vision of creating a network in Germany. And here we are now with more than 40 German universities with Saar network. Thank you to, your, to you, Elke, also for your advice and support throughout the creation implementation of the program. Very grateful to you. I want to thank the Freie University in general. They did not hesitate a minute to jump in when we asked them to become a partner in this conference. Thank you for your support and for opening this wonderful venue to us. Thank you to Herbert Grieshoop and to Sophie Bars. She's somewhere around. The Scholars of Risk Network. Mm. The Scholars of Risk Network. We are so grateful that you chose us to be a partner for the 2018 Congress. And I think looking back, we can be incredibly proud of what we have achieved together with the Freie University. I didn't, I, the conference has far surpassed my expectations. It has become a in, truly inspirational event. I cannot thank you enough for that. I also cannot thank you enough for our partnership in general. I know once you get on the plane, you will be busy vetting all the applications that come in for the, you are working with us, uh, together with us all the time. We are very grateful to Rob Quinn and to all the people from his team. Maybe I can mention one person, Lauren Crane, who has been so instrumental in putting the Congress together. I also have to thank my colleagues at the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. A large group of colleagues has traveled with us to Berlin to help us make the program, a, the Congress, a reality. Among them, Lea, Katja, Svetlana, Georg Scholl, who has been done a great job in handling the media relations, which is so important for this Congress. We've had other colleagues here. We have um, Karina Kamin, we have um, Nina Marsh, we have Katja Schmidt, who are also here. But there's one person, of course, whom I have to mention above all, and that is Frank. Frank Albrecht sitting here. <laughs> Frank was and is the master coordinator of this Congress on the side of the Humboldt Foundation, constantly weaving together a thousand threads. It would not have been possible without you. Thank you so much. I know you really need to catch up on sleep once we get back to Bonn. And there's someone else I want to thank. I don't know if she's, a, yes, she is there in the room on the side. I want to send, thank Susan Morgner. Susan Morgner and her team from Congressa, our event organizers. We, we know that you, are, you do great work, our really complex events we do with you, but this has been maybe the masterpiece. Thank you so much for bearing with us and being completely flexible, turning this into a great event. Thank you very much. It has been a privilege to be here, to be with all of you, and I now hand over to Rob. Uh, th thank you, Barbara, and thank you all. Um, so I, I did a lot of thank yous last night, uh, so I won't be quite as, as uh, long, but it doesn't hurt to repeat thank yous, right? So, um, and also let me just apologize up front, and I tell the staff all the time we have our bi-weekly staff meetings, and I want to recognize one person for the extraordinary effort they did, and every time I try to do that, I look and I see the next person and the next person and the next person, and they're all doing extraordinary things. And I always worry that I will leave someone out. So if I leave anyone out, forgive me, but in my heart, I've, I'm thanking you. 
Um, I want to say thank you to the German Federal Foreign Office for, for one reason that you didn't mention, which is in addition to all of the wonderful support here in Germany, and I hope making this a permanent program soon, you have given a model and an example that we are shamelessly attempting to encourage other states to follow in providing financial support. So thank you for that leadership in what I hope will be a multiplier effect for multiple states putting in support for scholars. So thank you. Um, Uh, I also want to again uh, thank uh, Suzanne and the rest of the team from Congressa, Stephanie, Ronnie, and all of you. Um, you will make it more difficult for me to back out on a promise that I have made to Lauren that we will never again do a Congress without con pr uh, professional assistance in organizing an event. So, so thank you for everything, okay? Um, I want to thank everybody here at FUB, Herbert and, and Elke and Sophie and Krista, it's a fabulous, fabulous building, really, and it's a fabulous campus because it has the spirit that we want to have at our events and the spirit that I think is in our programs and our partnerships, so thank you. Uh, and to everyone at the Humboldt uh, Stiftung because um, you guys had the vision to come and have a conversation in Amsterdam and turn it into something that is turning into more and is turning into more. Um, and you are marvelous partners. Uh, we had some great conversations about crazy ideas, and look at that, most of them have happened, uh, and it's working, so to, from Eno to Ulrika, Barbara, Frank, I can't say enough, uh, everybody on the team, Georg, everybody we have forgotten on the team, thank you all, because it's, it's the willingness to translate, uh, wouldn't it be a good idea, into, into action. Uh, and in the last break, I'm sorry, I think Katja slept, Svetlana, I know I'm forgetting people, Leah. forgive me. And Leah, sorry, thank you all. Um, in one of the breaks I was just saying to Elka, because this really did start with a conversation several congresses ago, uh, and Elka has been chipping away, chipping away, and all of this planning, and all of that was invisible, and all of it may not have worked, right? So when, I think we should just remember when we look at our world today and we look at the present and we look at all the places where it seems like everything's falling apart, I know from having been with all of you, there are people having those conversations and doing that planning and chipping away that it's still invisible. But some of this will blossom into things just like this has blossomed. I never would have imagined this from Amsterdam. So, so let's all keep having those conversations and chipping away and we will see it blossom uh, as we go forward. So. So thank you to all. I hope I haven't forgotten anybody, but, uh, and sorry, yes, of course, thank you for pointing. I forgot to thank my staff. So, um, <laughs> so I am very, very pleased to say that our staff has finally grown so large that uh, I, I can't possibly list all the names, so I'm not gonna try, because I will forget somebody, but um, you know how all they, hard they work because you've seen them all here. They work just as hard every day in the office uh, not just when there's events, so they were working that hard, plus this event, uh, and we couldn't do it. And I said it last night, but I'll say it again, especially to Lauren for carrying the weight of this event. Thank you for pushing us forward for the next two years, okay? So thank you all, uh, and to our board as well, and to our funders in the program. Uh, all of that makes it possible for us, as I said, to do more, to do better as we go forward. So, so thank you. Very brief thank yous from Freie Universität as well. I mean, like we've said already, because I mean, you mentioned so, so many of the people already. I just say generally thank you to the Alexander von Humboldt uh, Stiftung, Barbara Schell and your team. Thank you, Rob and Sa. Thank you, the Foreign Office and all the funders. Uh, the, 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 I would like to, uh, to uh, thank particularly in my team, uh, uh, Elke has been mentioned, Sophie has been mentioned, Florian Kosha has been mentioned, Stefan Rommel hasn't been mentioned. So these are probably the four people who are most, were most involved with everything we did here uh, over the last uh, four days. Uh, and I would like to thank a group of people who I can't name in person, but obviously they're all here and they're extremely instrumental at our university. And these are the professors who are willing, or not just willing, who push us to bring in uh, scholars or who helped the scholars. I have some examples in mind who have taken care so wonderfully of their particular scholar or their particular person who've, who've tried to find, uh, not just during the two years, be a good mentor or be a friend, but, but also help to get them into the transition processes. So what we need, we need these enthusiastic academics in our institutions who are willing to take this on because, I mean, in a way, 
we are just to a certain degree administrators and we, you are researchers and you need research contacts and you need research colleagues. So that's, that's the most important thing and I, I, so far the response at the university has been very, very good even if we approach people like, you know, there was a mathematician coming and we asked sort of the person, you know, who, whose fields was close and said, absolutely, I definitely want to take him in. I will take care of all of this. I mean, we had a lot of positive response. It might be different in individual cases, but I think overall this has been one of the most reward, rewarding experiences over the last uh, years, not just with scholars at risk, also with sort of the student refugees and the future, how much goodwill there is in in these institutions and in this particular institutions. So that's wonderful because sometimes we are just, you know, a normal academic institution and we <sighs> criticize ourselves, our work, the administration, everything is great and horrible. And then suddenly you have things where people are willing to engage and everything, it's, it's much more positive than usually. So my particular thanks go to all the academics who've been engaged in this program. End of thank yous. And now if you've closely studied your program, closely studied your program, there is still one point left. It's called participation feedback. And I asked the organizers, oh, what does that mean at this point? Well, it means at this point that whoever wants to say something now can say something now. We still have some minutes and, you know, about whatever you want to do. Things you learned, things you liked, people you've met, things you would like to change next time, things, well, whatever really. I mean, like, whoever feels courageous enough, you, you have a proper evaluation. I think we have a proper evaluation afterwards. But, you know, sometimes we've talked so much on stage, maybe some of you feel the urgent need to say something now. Now is the time, or maybe you haven't talked enough yet after four days. Maybe, you know, some of you might not have talked enough. So. This is the situation, this is your opportunity, because afterwards it's just drink and food. So, <laughs> is there anyone who would like to say a few words? It can be friendly things as well. It doesn't have to be just critical. Oh, you see some? Oh, over there, yeah, the lady over there. Thank you. I would like to thank for the organization to begin first. Um, but what I would like to share is um, I'm truly amazed and happy uh, to hear um, the experience of students um, and other scholars at risk or refugee uh, intellectuals who participated and who shared with us their, not, not their personal story, uh, unlike what we see and expect more often, but their struggle uh, and they inspired us by telling their experiences in different countries other than telling how they were the victim of the state or the institutions or whatever uh, but they inspired us um, by telling about their experiences struggle um, 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 examples of solidarity cases uh, and I'm grateful that they were invited and you off offered us this opportunity to hear uh, about their voices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other uh, contributions or remarks? I, where, it's over, oh, over there, yeah. Hair with uh, gray hair, gray haired gentleman. Yeah, my name is Mukul. I I'm from Delhi University. Uh, there are two of us, Vinita and I, who came from Delhi University. And uh, we just had, we were talking about uh, what might be possible in India. And we thought we'd just suggest this to you. We don't know exactly the concrete form in which it can be carried out. But as a lead up perhaps to the con conference in 2020, the two of us thought that we could perhaps make a proposition which would be that uh, we could try and organize something at the level of India because we were barely able to touch upon the terrible situation that Indian universities are in at the moment. Uh, and we were really able to talk about what's happening in Delhi, at Delhi University and at the JNU. But I think uh, many universities all over the country, and we're talking about 760 universities, which are in dire straits. 
So we could perhaps think of moving towards organizing something at the level of India, I'm not even talking of South Asia, moving towards 2020, uh, perhaps with your help, where we could perhaps begin to map out which universities are facing which kind of threats to academic freedom. And if that process could get going, then perhaps the intervention from India could be much more holistic and much more effective. So exactly how concretely we go about it, we're not very sure, but there is a huge problem there which needs to be addressed, acknowledged and uh, to be addressed. So I just thought I'd put this on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more? I think the general. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Sardar Dirmanjolo. I'm from Turkey. I think I have three things to say, to be brief. Uh, the first one is uh, it breaks my heart to hear the, the wishes for these programs to continue. I honestly wish these programs be discontinued and peace and justice prevail. So I had to say that. Uh, secondly, I would like to see more scholar-initiated sessions at these types of meetings. I think they are very important. And some of us don't teach anymore. Uh, we are moving from one place to the other. And as far as I'm concerned, it would be a good idea for the hosting institutions to make arrangements so that some scholars could be invited to some sessions at the university, depending on the compatibility, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it would be a good chance to, say, invite a scholar from Syria to a class on international relations. That would be a very strong dose of reality into that class. Okay. And finally, I would like to see uh, child care provided I think it's very important that these types of meetings that some amount of child care is provided. Thank it you. is actually. Oh, it has you. been provided, know. yes. There were just not so many children. How many, Frank? Three, Three children, they were taken care of. Yeah. Thank you. And there is here a, a, a gentleman over here from Yemen, I think. Thank you very much. I actually, in short, I want just to remind the people here that in this world there is a country called Yemen and there the, the case is very worse, more worse than, the, than any other country. And I don't find any space for Yemen in this event. We have more than 50. I look to the program and I count how many presentation and speech uh, regarding mostly they are for Turkey and uh, for Iran. I appreciate that and I express my solidarity with the people anywhere and but actually it, I think it will be better if we give a chance and space for uh, the people who are under threat everywhere. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um. I would like uh, first to thank the organizers for, for hosting uh, this actually very interesting, important um, event. And uh, I would also uh, have some of, of my own observation, or at least to share some of my experiences since I got this uh, scholarship. Uh, I would like just, because all of us mainly uh, from academic background, Normally we are teaching, conducting research, maybe uh, the situation is different back home in our original countries. It's not really great and ambitious for, for many of us, but we manage somehow to be in the academic track. Actually, I would share my own experience with uh, the, the, the host university. I would say that I'm academically isolated. Basically, I'm not as if I'm not at the university because I think it has to do with probably the system, it has to do with the background of my area of expertise as a maybe political scientist and, and uh, Middle Eastern expert or whatever. Uh, probably uh, the host department, they have nothing to offer for me. 
and I think uh, probably many other colleagues uh, as well, probably they're sharing the same. Um, so for me, this is really great, uh, despite the other programs, which I know that um, uh, Florian and, and some other programs, which actually I was part of these and I was invited as uh, probably according to my area of expertise, but not because I'm a scholar here, so I, I would love to uh, also to share my experience at the same time, not to forget that I'm also uh, uh, in the academic uh, world. So basically, I would say, if I go back after a year or two years, I didn't, uh, I'm not really going to, to, to take that much from at least the institutional um, experience or contacting uh, uh, colleagues from uh, across disciplines. I think this is, I would just emphasize this. And when I raised in my comments or remarks uh, this afternoon, probably no one paid attention when I said, uh, I think it, uh, the assessment for the host institutions is really uh, something we need to, to, to highlight. Uh, not just the scholars, and we are treated like probably now we are at risk. But at the same time, although I'm here, but again, I'm still involved in my, my country's uh, uh, problems, uh, de leading with, dealing with many of the questions and conducting research and trying to assist in, assist in some of the, the problems there. So we are trying to, to, to make use of, of our time here and the peaceful, and we're enjoying actually the peace, and, but actually we are scholars. We, are, we, we need to benefit actually from our stay, and it would be mutual kind, uh, kind of exchange. It's not just being here uh, uh, to get. I mean, it would be very interesting even to be invited for uh, talks or for other conferences, although we have our own network. I'm not complaining about this, so we, at least I'm, I have no time actually, but it would be really interesting to even to share our uh, experience and also to be part of the academic circle. We are not looking for posts or extra, uh, you know, competing for anyone else. I mean, I, either for the, the space or for, for the, for the positions, but at least just want to offer our experiences, even of teaching Arabic, if this is at least the limited or the, the small uh, contribution of our, uh, of our, uh, our, our, our uh, gratitude and, uh, and uh, be so grateful to the, to, the, to the initiative in general. Thank you so much. So, I think... Do you see any? Oh, there's, there's one more contribution. Yeah, two more over here. Uh, uh, my name is As Charles Hayum. Uh, originally from Ethiopia. I'm uh, working as a visiting professor at the University of Louisiana in the US. Uh, I just want to say a few things. I mean, uh, as a, a, a scholar at risk, uh, I know that the positions that we have as, uh, through the uh, Scholars at Risk Network is a temporary position. And I mean, we, wouldn't, we shouldn't assume that it is supposed to be as a long-term kind of opportunity. So I just want to say thank you for providing me this opportunity and for providing other many scholars the opportunity to engage in academic activities, either in teaching or research activities. So, I mean, most of us wouldn't have this opportunity uh, if it is not with uh, scholars at risk uh, work and activity and with the willingness of the hosting institutions. Uh, from my experience, uh, what I know is, uh, I mean, these days, not only in the US, but also in uh, many countries, uh, academic institutions are facing with serious financial uh, issues. And within that situation, having the opportunity to, to be part of that institutions is uh, something that uh, we have to appreciate as a scholar. And uh, I just want to say thank you to SAR and other uh, partner hosting institutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have one more. And then we, I think we're sort of getting to a close soon. Okay, I'm Jimona Ibrahim from Cameroon. I have this, I mean, when I look at it, it's a very nice, very wonderful program. But my suggestion is, what, what if you think about it to be continental, meaning that 
if you displace, if a scholar is at risk in Syria, is a scholar coming to Germany, you should go to Egypt. For example, if a scholar is at risk at, in Cameroon, maybe you could go to Ghana, because there's a strong relationship in the continental development, because the idea that maybe a scholar would do here may be difficult for him to relocate back, because it's easy to come out than to go back. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Rob, would you like to comment on that one? I just want to comment on that one, and thank you for that, and really for all the interventions. But uh, for those who aren't privileged to the conversations amongst the sections and in the International Advisory Committee, you know, we're at a place in the growth of our network where we're really focused. There's so much energy in Europe. We have our fabulous Europe director, Sinead O'Gorman, who really is equally responsible for all of this. Um, and we hope to be formalizing a SAR Europe sort of branch. So. Uh, and then North America, and then yes, the other regions as well, because we think it's absolutely essential that this have a regional focus and bring in the tremendous experience in India and the other parts of the world. But it will take us a little while. Um, on our path there, we have to follow the path we've been following, which is get as many individual institutions as we can to get involved, and as many individual scholars and associations and disciplinary associations. So. So for those who are in the regions that are clearly underrepresented in our dialogue and in our membership, help us, because we want to do that. We want to be going in that direction. OK. Um, dear guests, dear scholars, dear colleagues, I am exhausted. Um, not sure about you, but my feeling is that even in this room, suddenly the energy level goes a little bit down. I think we're all a little bit exhausted. So, this is actually the end. But it's not the end, first of all, because there's so much work to do. And secondly, since you know, we're funded and generously invited by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, there is always, always a reception at the end. I've never been to the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation without a reception. So, another reception. And thank you very much for a wonderful conference. Thank you. Thank you.